Hello, I'm Kyle Webster. I'm an illustrator and I'm a maker of custom Photoshop brushes and tools. And today I want to talk to you about using the brushes of Edward Monk and what makes them distinctive and different from your average Photoshop brush. So let's dive in and explore what can be done with these very custom and very special painting tools in Photoshop. At this point, you should have your brushes loaded as tool presets as explained in the earlier tutorial video. And you'll see them up here in your top left corner by using your drop down menu for your tools. We're going to go through them one by one and explain how they work. Now what's cool about tool presets is that they allow you to save not just the features of the brush that you normally would see, but you also get to save your flow, your opacity, your brush mode, and some other good things, including even the color if you like. Let's start with the filbert brush right here. Okay. Now if you're used to working with regular Photoshop brushes, you probably have seen that uh, you might have like a round brush or something like that. But with these kinds of custom brushes, not only can you control uh, the size of the brush, but you can also do things like control the angle. As you can see here I'm rotating the brush and it's going to change the shape and I can tilt away from vertical. What that means is instead of holding the brush perpendicular to the surface of my drawing tablet or device, okay, I'm going to tilt away more towards a horizontal, okay, or like parallel rather to the surface and that's going to give me a, a stroke like this, okay, and then if I go the full width, see the difference? Alright, now also pressure controls how much of that canvas shows through. Just like if you're painting in the real world, if you use light pressure you can just graze the surface of your canvas like this, okay? Really nice kind of dry brush effect. Or you can bear down and get more of that paint to fill in, alright, like that. So get used to experimenting with how you use these brushes so that you're always making different kinds of marks the same way you would use them in the real world. All right. Now the other brushes, the medium flat, the short flat, and the short flat spars, these do the same thing. Okay. They react to pressure, rotation, okay, tilt, and all these good things. The short flat brush does the same. Alrighty. The short flat sparse brush, it's the last of the bunch, is just very small and very sparse bristles, just like the description says. Okay. And by the way, these larger brushes, for example, the fill, but let's go back to that. If I wanted to ever use it for some detail work, all I have to do is size it down. And you can do that very quickly and easily by using the bracket keys on your keyboard. So I'll hit the left bracket key now a few times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm down to a 60 pixel brush, which is nice for a little detail work, like so. Okay. I can size it right back up again. I could even go up to maybe say 200 pixels and it's going to be just fine. These brushes were all created with pretty large stamp size to begin with. So you're in good shape there. Well, let's jump over to mixer brushes and talk about how cool they are. Now, you can do some really interesting things with mixer brushes. I'll put down this yellow color here and then I'll grab that red like we were doing before. Okay. And you'll see if I paint out here, no big deal, right? But watch what happens when I bring it into the yellow. Ah, see that? Just blends it right away, mixes the two colors together. And this is a really nice thing to do. So if you want that quick, smooth blending, this is the way to go. Okay, you still get that nice canvas texture coming through. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Filbert Dry Mixer. Start with some red. Just put some paint down. All right. Now I'm going to grab some yellow, and I'm just going to gently graze over it. Now you'll notice it is not mixing the paint like the other brush, okay? It's just grazing it, sort of laying it on top there. But what I'm going to do next is sample right here where I've got some red and some yellow and some canvas texture and all that good stuff. And I come up here and look and you can see now that I've got a blend of all those colors together. And when I make another stroke, look what it does. Really nice. 
So this is a, a cool way to get a sort of impasto effect. Impasto being the thick paint, okay? Impasto. Brush across and across. I could sample this, get a completely different effect. You can do this all day long. Now, if you notice that you have any lag when you're painting with this effect, the simple way to fix that is to come over here and make sure that sample all layers does not have a check mark by it. So I'll turn that off. I've got a pretty zippy machine here, but if your machine is a little older, a little slower, don't worry. You can just turn that off and you'll be able to make nice quick brush strokes with this effect. Okay, and you'll see here the round ratty brush does the same thing. So I'll put some yellow down. And I grab some um, some of this color here. Pull that over here. Using light pressure again, okay, so I can mix the two like that. And then sample the, the two of them together, and this is what I get. Isn't that fun? Look at that. That is really fun. All right, there you go. Those are the brushes. Now, I'm a big fan of key commands, so I'll quickly throw a few at you here at the end. I like to have one hand on the keyboard and one hand holding the stylus. And what I do is to move my canvas around, I hold down the space bar, like this. And then to zoom in, I hold down the space bar and the command key on a Mac, or the control key on a PC. Hold them down together, you'll see that temporarily pulls up my magnifying glass. I can just zoom in. To zoom out, hold down the space bar and then hold down the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC. And there we go, zoom back out. So zip around with the space bar, use the command key or the option key, control or alt, in combination with the space bar to zoom in and zoom out. And you've got your bracket keys to size your brush up and down. You don't really need much else than that. You're ready to go paint. All right, I'll see you at the next tutorial. Bye.